Now, in our previous episode, we unpacked sexual dysfunction in a nutshell. And during the course of this season, we'll be addressing it layer by layer. Today, we're going to be shedding the spotlight or casting the spotlight on sexual dysfunction in men. And my guest in studio for this discussion is once again, Dr. Mark. Now, Mark, we've given a bit of a broad outline of sexual dysfunction. And I know for men, this is the hard one of the hardest discussions to to be having so i mean it's good that we're talking <laughs> about not hard it. but <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, pardon the pun <coughs> but mark so let's let's dive in for for men what are the biggest issues that that guys are dealing with um that are causing first of all the dysfunction and secondly the distress around the dysfunction you know michael i actually think we ne just need to take one step back and say for the majority of men, they think sexual dysfunction is the inability to get or maintain an erection. Mm -hmm. It's so much more than that. Um, last week, we went through the different types of sexual dysfunction. In fact, I can touch on those specifically for men. We have your interest desire disorders, mm -hmm. lack of libido. Now, for men, this is probably one of the first things that they start noticing. Um, this can be brought on by stress, by fatigue, by chronic conditions, by lack of sleep, um, medical conditions like heart, uh, uh, hypertension, diabetes, and the medication that we take for them, especially depression and anxiety medication. It decreases your want or desire for sexual right. activity. The next one is your arousal disorders where the, the brain is engaged. Now, you know what, most men can, can get physically aroused when the brain is there, but certain men can't. Men who had procedures that damaged uh, nerves in the pelvic oh, okay. area, post prostatectomy or treatment for cancer. Patients who had trauma to the spine or to the pelvic area, so paraplegics, quadriplegics, et cetera, et cetera. The mind's engaged, mm -hmm. but it's in, uh, they have an inability to get physically right. aroused. Right. And then we have our orgasmic disorders, and this is probably one of the biggest problems with sexual dysfunction. So, you know what, we know about premature ejaculation. This is, I always compare it to uh, playing hide and seek as teenagers. One, two, three, here I come, ready <laughs> or not. Um, <coughs> but that leads to a lot of distress and embarrassment. Right, right. But it's, on, it's not only premature ejaculation. It can be um, a retrograde uh, uh, ejaculation where you go through all the stages of sexual arousal and achieve an orgasm, but you, you don't have anything to show for it because you are ejaculating back into the bladder instead of through the penis. Ah, okay, okay. And then we have something called retarded ejaculation where, you know what, everything is there except the orgasm. Okay. And then we also have pain conditions. And I, I think we sometimes forget about these. Um, Pyronis disease, where there's a curvature of the penis, can be really, really uncomfortable if a man gets turned on and starts developing an, er an mm -hmm. erection. Um, and you know what? That's going to lead to a um, avoidance kind yes. of situation. But you also have this with prostatitis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's not just about getting an erection mm -hmm. and maintaining it. There's so much more mm -hmm. that plays a role here. I mean, as with so many things health-related, this is a system that we're talking about. Yeah. And there are many aspects to it, and everything is interconnected. So if one thing is off, there's going to be a, a, a knock-on or a cascade effect in, in, in some way. Absolutely. You need both um, stimulation from a physical and um, a neurological perspective. Mm. Otherwise, you know what, things just don't pan out the way that you planned it. Right, right. And that leads to a lot of distress. Unfortunately, it's something that a lot of men are still scared of to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, what we need to understand is that sexual dysfunction, erectile dysfunction, is a sign of an underlying problem, whether yes. it being cardiovascular, diabetes, cholesterol, cancer, psychological issues like depression and anxiety, stress, burnout, um, 
you know what, we need to acknowledge these conditions mm -hmm. in order for us to address them effectively. Absolutely. Now, Mark, how important is it to have an overall assessment to understand what's going on and where, what the lay of the land is in terms of a starting point? Michael, it's crucial. Um, I, I think in our next episode, we'll delve into the different treatment modalities, but um, we can't treat if we don't know what the underlying cause of a diagnosis is. And this is something that I hammer on with my patients. So hormonal imbalances, incredibly important. Um, it's shocking to know that testosterone is declining in each generation. Mm. Um, I'm starting to see subclinical hypogonadism, in other words, low levels of testosterone, that's symptomatic in younger and younger and younger right. patients. Our lifestyles, the food that we eat, the fact that we are no longer as active as we used to be, um, stress, which has an impact on our sleep um, and overall functioning is declining. Um, and that leads to hormonal disturbances. Um, we forget that stress has a hormonal effect. It elevates cortisol, mm -hmm. it elevates blood pressure, and now we start developing things like metabolic disease with diabetes, insulin resistance, and we put on medications for that, and that has a negative impact on the hormone systems itself. It throws them out of balance, and you know what? It becomes a snowball effect. Right. Is, do you feel, sometimes I feel there's an uncommonality of practitioners who are really looking at the bigger picture. How do you feel that is? The holistic approach to well-being and health is now starting to become crucial, but there are very few holistic practitioners around in South Africa at this point in time. Right. Hopefully it will start changing because there's too few of us mm. that can manage all these conditions. You need your general practitioners, but you need your holistic specialists. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sexual dysfunction, you can reverse sexual dysfunction in the majority of cases if you understand the underlying cause, in other words, if you make a proper diagnosis, whether it's comorbidities, whether it's medication that I need to change, whether it's a relationship problem that I have, whether I'm incompatible, either because of my sexual proclivities and what I want and what my partner um, does not like or does mm -hmm. not, is not into. And we need to bring that together and we need to bring it into the open. That's so the, the key mm -hmm. to managing sexual dysfunction is number one, being honest and open with yourself. I have a problem being honest with your partner and so that you get the buy-in of your partner. I want us to do something about this. Please help me. Absolutely. And then come and speak to your medical practitioner because we have different treatment modalities available, which we will discuss at a later period. Which I'm looking forward to having that discussion <coughs> about. Mark, if someone wants to get in touch with you to find a little bit more, start that conversation. How do they get hold of you? Easiest. Call us at the T Clinic on 10 or get hold of us via our Facebook website, uh, Instagram pages. It's www.vtclinic.com. Wonderful. Mark, as always, a great pleasure to have you with us. And I look forward to chatting again. Thanks, Michael. Great. Pleasure.